Hey, hey, people. It's Max8 tutorial number 43. 3D fun. Part 3, and hopefully the last, but you never know, I can be pretty long-winded. Well, you can hear the music vaguely in the background, so you probably know that we're still enjoying our very strange uh, three-dimensional manipulation of uh, objects in space here. Um, so let's, uh, let's put Bart over to the side here and try to finish this whole thing up. Um, there we go, and I'm just going to go over to our patcher window. Here we go. So one last thing um, that is kind of bugging me here is that when all of this stuff's running, you sort of uh, lose your ability to have much... Um, well, I mean, we can manipulate it pretty well, but right here I have this... Um, uh, Let's let's set this at zero so we can get a good look at this. Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, cylinder here that I stuck here. And let's stop the position. Or there we go. So um, what we're not getting is any of this nice rotation. And when things are all kind of flying around there, it's hard to get a grip on the rotation. And I thought, hey, one last thing that we have not addressed is the rotation of the object and well what would we rotate you probably or maybe you don't realize that you can rotate the entire space in which things happen by rotating your whole JIT world you can also actually rotate the JIT mesh and that's what we're gonna do now and the way that we're gonna do it I'm gonna stick Bart up here at the top a little bit more out of the way um, is that we can make something that's a lot like our position changer or our color changer, either one, um, and make it run the rotate around. And I promise, once I once I make this one last adjustment, we'll whip this thing into a video 3D player, the likes of which have never been seen. But for the moment, let's option click on this and duplicate it. We'll bring it down here. We will rename it the, uh, what shall we call it, the rotation ch uh, changer. Rotation changer, sure. Rotation changer. And then we'll lock our patcher and open it. Well, yes, let's do that first before we screw anything else up. So uh, lock your patcher, double click on the old rotation cha changer, and there it is with the internal components of the um, what was it? Position changer. Right. Okay. So let's uh, first off stop this thing and think about what we need. In rotation, what we're going to want is, um, you know, I'm going to go back and just shut that. Oh, I actually, I can just shut it off this way. There we go. Um, in uh, rotation, we're going to want to go from a uh, cycle does a sine wave that goes between negative one and positive one. There's another object that simply goes from zero to one that's called phaser. So we're going to change all these to phasers. They go, it goes, it ramps from zero to one in, uh, I mean, in very fine decimal points, and then it starts over at zero, which if you're going around in a circle, you go from zero to 360 degrees, and you don't go backwards. Well, you, you could if you wanted to but you usually just keep going. So all we need is something that essentially counts from 0 to 360 degrees. So unlocking our new rotation changer, we start changing the things in it. And we're going to call this one a phaser, P-H-A-S-O-R, tilde. And let's just start with it as a 1.0, um, which means that it does that count from uh, from 0 to 1 every 1 second, okay? And um, you can actually see it doing it right here if you peek behind these patch cords, okay? So let's uh, duplicate that um, the way we did last time. And there. Now they're all phasers, and they're running upward. And... Um, you know, let's just uh, uh, get rid of some stuff here because we're not gonna we're not gonna deal with it the same way. 
So, um, I don't think it's bad that they all run at different speeds, but perhaps we would like to change them instead. So, uh, let's imagine that outside we had three slides to change the X, the Y, and the Z rotation. So we would need three inputs, and here I'm just going to duplicate these inputs up here that would tell us what um, what these numbers are and so this one would come in and it would connect right to uh, oh interesting um, it's I'm going to connect it to both of these I'll show you why in a second um, it would change this number to that and it would also set this number here oops and I forgot to let go of the shift key the idea being that when that number comes in it will immediately change this number and then if you happen to turn the machine off this will save it so that when you turn it back on it'll knock that number back in there isn't that cool okay so same thing with this one coming in here we're gonna say you go right to here and holding the shift key but only once then I put it also in the right hand inlet of this message which will be sent down to this box and then I'm going to do the same here so that this can come down here and I didn't hold shift but that's okay and there's just one other thing that I have noted um, with uh, the phaser is that and, and the cycle as well is that they just run they run cycle on on a cycle so even if you shut them off and tell them to go to zero they're still putting out a number all the time and then you can't manually change it which is annoying so I'm gonna stick a gate down here so we just put a gate in there no tilde and um, we don't need to it, it has a default inlet of one so that's fine and then um, uh, don't hold the shift key for this it that acts weird with gate so just put that in the right inlet hook that to the outlet and then um, uh, every time the uh, what have we called this the um, the rotation uh, positioner uh, activates it activates the gate then and when it deactivates it opens the gate and then we can adjust it manually from the outside so I think that's going to be a real improvement in the way this works and um, good so uh, we have everything running here oh and um, <clears throat> before we had needed some level of complication to uh, add two to the um, to the Z position but now what we really want to do is get these to scale to 360 degrees from the output that the phaser gives you so um, we know the phaser starts at 0 0, 0 0.0 and goes to 1 1 1.0 so then the minimum output is going to be 0 and the maximum output is going to be 360 degrees to bring it around a full circle that's 360.0 because we want to make sure that it's a float I, I better make that zero a, uh, a decimal as well and then uh, I'll just uh, copy that interior and uh, paste it inside each one of these so they're all the same now they're all going to be running maybe forwards maybe backwards we don't know but up to 360 and we can see they're running rather quickly up to 360 um, so uh, we'll just need to feed them some good numbers from the outside so we'll just turn this off for the moment and uh, eh, it looks okay it looks good um, okay so um, we can put these these all get packed together they get sent out the gate and right to our rotation changer which um, 
we are going to send down to the JIT GL mesh. However, uh, first we're going to make a slider for each one of these inputs and um, and uh, there we go. Um, normally a slider goes from 0 to 127 um, but we are not going to want it to do that. We are going to want it to go to from uh, 0, 0.0 up to uh, 1.0. So highlight that and get our um, inspector open. And uh, mine's usually off screen as you can see. So uh, go over to the inspector and the first thing to do is click in the float output box. If you don't do that it may reset it after you change the range. So then go down to the range and you'll want to just put in 1.0. So that's at the output minimum 0 and the range is 1 so you should be good to go. Now that you have that set and we see that it goes up and down between 0 and 1 we can uh, uh, make a slider for each one of the uh, uh, axis rolls, we'll call it the x, y, and z axis that we're going to be rolling in there. So let's just uh, highlight both of these and I option click on them. I think that's alternate click on a, on a PC but I can't remember. And now we have those three units there. Just connect them up. And uh, so, what are we going to do here with these uh, uh, numbers coming out of here? Um, what we want to do is apply these to um, the rotation of the JIT GL mesh. So, what we're going to do is create an attribute. You'll want to type the letter N, A T T R U I, that's for attribute. And then do not uh, hook, don't hook these up. Hold on, don't do anything crazy. Just hook the attribute up to the mesh first um, because if it does have numbers coming out of there you don't want to uh, change a parameter that you don't know which one it is. So what we want to do is lock our patcher and select on here the rotate XYZ and you'll see if you look at it there's three numbers and we have three numbers. Uh, oops. Uh, I meant to unlock my patcher there. Just move it over. I'm going to stretch it out so you can see the three numbers. Okay, so there they are. And um, what we're going to want to do is uh, our uh, rotation changer is outputting three numbers, and now they will become the numbers that rotate XYZ is doing. Oh, look at that. It's already working. That is just so fabulous. Um, I think I left it running inside, so uh, I lock our patcher here and um, turn it on and then turn it off again and now it actually stops. Um, <clears throat> so um, let's uh, make it a uh, shape here that shows off its rotation a little bit better. So now we have a plane and um, uh, if we uh, change the position just to a place where we can see it here. Um, now we turn it on and we can see how fast we can move each one of the axes of rotation around. So if I turn up the second, there they all are going a little bit, um, but it's hard to see which one's which. So let's uh, shut these two down to zero. So the first one is uh, turning sort of end over um, end over end at you, if you will, and the second one is turning around the axis that's going sort of vertically, as you can see, sort of uh, uh, straight up and down. And then, um, if you take a look at this last one, let's see what it's doing. Okay, so it spins on the axis that if the horizon line was a sort of pencil going through the middle of it, this would be spinning around it. 
So you can actually control the speed of each one of these and uh, um, how quickly it turns around. So uh, yeah, so just sort of set it to uh, what you want and then um, hopefully uh, now you can still use um, the handle, meaning you can grab it from the outside, but that handle is changing the JIT world around, the whole JIT world, and then when, <clears throat> when our rotation changer goes back to uh, making its rotation changes, it sort of resends the object to right where it wants anyway. So um, it's sort of a little bit of a fight between the two. So you have to choose where you're going to rotate things and send them or whether you're going to re rotate the whole world. So there we go. We've got some stuff. It's flying around. Uh, we'll just uh, get our donut back up there. Oh, hello, donut. And um, turn our position changer back on so it starts flying around a little bit. I believe we had been using something kind of small to keep it more in the frame. Oh boy, that is just too good. It's too good. Um, so now you'll see if we turn the, the rotation changer off. Hey, I saw the inside of the donut. Oh, that's so great. Oh my god, it's so good. It's like candy land. Um, but then, uh, yeah. So um, we are going to leave it in that position. So let's um, go ahead. We, we've got it all working now. Can we go and now um, upgrade all of our controls so that we can start working towards sort of a finished product here is what I'm thinking. So um, let's see here. Um, I guess the, oops, the um, color changer could use one of those uh, sliders. I'm just going to make this a horizontal slider uh, to fit the space. So the color changer should work fine going from zero to one, and I'm just going to connect that up there. You can see it now. Um, That'll be nice. We'll be able to control that um, with the slider. Um, option clicking that. Make another one for the position changer, but it's worth considering that the output of the position changer might not be what we want. So go down here, you'll see the float output. It's, this is the same as the one we've already modified. So float output's already on, but we want to change the range so that it can go uh, let's say to plus three and minus three. So that would be a six altogether. And then we make the minimum um, negative three. Okay, so then it'll go between negative three and positive three. I think that'll give us a pretty broad range of position possibilities. And uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, this uh, X fader could. Uh, benefit from a, a slider as well. And um, going from zero to one, <clears throat> it's already good to go. So we can just hook that right up there. In fact, if we run this in the top, instead of just having them both hooked there, now we'll actually be able to see when the information comes from our cycle, uh, what would we call it, modulation changer. Um, when, it, when, when that's changing the number um, and we turn the gate on, it will drive the slider back and forth. And uh, that will be, um, that'll be nice to be able to watch. Okay, so, and speaking of our little modulation driver there, um, if we have a, a, a slider for that too, I think that's gonna be good. Um, we probably don't need it to go any faster than one, so. Uh, I, I think we can leave that one with the adjustment that it already has. So uh, I think we're good. Uh, if we start, um, let's see here, grouping these together, like information, 
that we're going to want to see together for the color changer, the position changer, um, yeah, so um, we don't really need to see that because it's always going to be the same, but we do want to be able to turn on and off the rendering, so that's an important one. So let's just start selecting things that we want to include in the presentation. We'll just try to get them all up there. So we've got the color changer, position changer, the render button, don't need the position. We do need all this audio stuff, not the Metro, but uh, good to have the easy DAC there. I like seeing this little screen of the, of the sound and what it's becoming when it's video. Um, I'm holding the shift key down, by the way, just to get all these things. Uh, a way to import images, the control for our automated um, modulation, uh, the rotation changer. Oh boy. Um, okay, yeah, uh, we, we'll want to be able to change our shape. Uh, matrix output, I wouldn't necessarily need it, but it usually resets when you shut your um, patch down. So you want that. We get the uh, draw mode. That's good. Uh, lighting, probably don't need it. Um, control over our textures. I think I'd rather do this a different way instead of having texture chicken and texture chili. So what should we do here? Um, we can copy all of them and, uh, oh, let, look, let's just, uh, stick all the ones we have, um, in presentation mode and we'll, we'll come back for the others. Okay. So let's see how it's going here. Um, now that they're all in presentation mode, I guess I got to put these in, um, what do we want here? We want um, a different message to hit to select these as the texture for our shape. So let's uh, highlight all of them and uh, make a new message for each one of them. What should it be here? Uh, video. Very good. Um, image. It, whoops. Oh, I, I didn't click in the... darn it. Stop that. I, I typed outside the message box and then the I gave me a, a connected uh, integer box and another message. Great. So I'll just get rid of those and uh, type in that box image. And then this one will just make it video plus image. and connect them up and then we'll uh, highlight them and put them in presentation mode as well fantastic and uh, what else do we got everything Let's just uh, go ahead. We'll put the whole thing in present. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back, 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 back. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot the most important one, which is the B patcher that has our video player in it. Um, so uh, put that in presentation. And now let's go back to presentation and see how things are looking. OK, good. So um put the video this is just my arrangement i'm just deciding on doing it this way so i'm going to put the video player over here in the left hand corner and then and then we're going to get the um this is the erase color so we'll just make a comment type c and type uh color color and it's really erase color isn't it that's just what it is so uh, erase color okay um, if you don't label them you forget what everything is and uh, 
it gets embarrassing trying to figure, you know, just figure it out by, by feel later. Okay, um, let's see. So we're going to put this um, down here. Now, I'm not highly thinking through this arrangement here, but you probably should when you do this. But uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So this is the um, this is the render button. It's it's important. We have to keep this in a place of prominence. Um, so uh, we'll just put that up here at the top. And let's see. When this is our well, positioner, our auto position, our positionomatic, our uh, another, let me just steal a comment here and write auto position. I don't like that. Stretch it out a little bit. Looks good. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, we'll take the import image thing and stick it here uh, all the audio and put it underneath that I kind of like that sort of the you know the inputs on the side and the modulation on the bottom I'm liking it I'm liking it okay and um, my god what uh, this is our um, uh, what do we even call this thing? Um, this is the the video shape. This is like the shape versus sound modulation moment. She oh, she call this the mm, modulation sound uh, balance. Modulation balance. Okay, it's good enough. That's insane. It's good enough. It's good enough. And then um, over here we have the automatic driver for the modulation. As you recall, this is the slide that runs the um, that runs the little cycle and. Uh, so I like the sort of consistency of having that. Uh, wait a second. I would really like to have that number um, that goes along with this. And uh, so, that, so that these sort of work the same way. So there's some sort of um, quick way to tell. Uh, you know, uh, what, what do they call that? Uh, it's intuitive, that it becomes an intuitive interface. So uh, I'm just... Uh, Get out of um, presentation mode. I'm going to put that number in to presentation mode. Now uh, go back to presentation mode, grab the number, drag it over, and uh, we'll. I think I think we'll just uh, resize that slider because this. Is, well, that's how fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it makes sense. They'll all be the same then. So we'll resize the slider um, and put its number next to it so we can see what it's doing. And we will call it uh, auto modulation speed. Auto modulation should probably be good enough. And we'll just stick that out there. And uh, good, good, good. Uh, I'm gonna. You don't need to straighten these up. I can't stop myself from doing it. Apparently. Um, okay, okay. Now modulation balance. I think. I think we could come up with a better name for that. Uh, let's call it. Uh, video sound balance. How's that? Okay. Great. And um, 
And now we just need an organizing principle for all this stuff. Uh, let's see, we've got our uh, rotation, we've got our texture selection, we've got how to draw. So let's um, make a, a section here for, um, for 3D. And uh, we'll just call it the 3D uh, world. And um, we'll put this in big and bold here. So just to highlight that, we'll go over here. We'll make it bold. We'll make it uh, 24, 20, 24. There we go. And so that'll, and I hate it when it's on the left. I like it in the center. Okay, so this is our 3D world and we can have sort of our controls for it under that. So now we've got our Atrui's. We stick them under 3D World. We have our uh, draw mode. And then we can go get our texture selection messages. And uh, uh, this is tricky because we have to label these kind of to tell people what to do with them. So let's see. Um, Texture, source, texture, texture, just check, texture, that's good enough. Texture, map, okay. I don't know. Give this some long thought as you design your, your interface and uh, it might make more sense than mine. So what do we got left here? Uh, you know, these all control 3D too, so it's not really a separation. Um, hmm. So 3D world is really separate from the, uh, the video world. So let's just take all this stuff. And um, yeah, we'll just take all this stuff and move it down and reorganize it here. We'll put 3D world at the top so we know what it is. Because uh, erase color, auto position, auto modulation, they're all part of it. We'll just tidy these up. What we need is a tiny bit more space here. Come on, everybody here. Uh, stay, stay selected. Okay. And then we'll just trim that up so they're sort of the same size. And then this. And that will give us just almost enough room for our... Uh, rotation control. Oops. Hmm. Hang on a second here. Um, before I get too confused to remember what everything is. Oops, I'm sorry. Oops, oops, oops. Got stuff all over my desk. Okay, let's uh, comment uh, rotation. Rotate speed. Um, and we'll put that down there too. No, it's a little lower. It's just a different kind of control here. And we'll get all these. We'll put them on top. Uh, a little tall. It's okay. And we'll move them around a little. And then if you, you take all three of them, you can actually adjust them all together. And it keeps them nice and tidy. Uh, that should be enough. Okay. So then uh, we just need a way to turn it on and off. Let's see here. We need just a little more space. Uh, we'll just move this over. Nobody really cares. Okay. Yeah, there. Then put rotate speed up here. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. And then we can label these uh, X, space, 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 Y, space, 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 Z and um, put the activator here and uh, we'll just get another little comment here and we'll call this uh, auto rotate auto rotation Ro rotate rotate auto rotate 
I like it that way. I'm leaving it that way. All right, and then the texture map can just live right over here down at the bottom. So to some degree this all makes sense, but I think it would be good if we uh, made a couple panel objects. Just type N panel and um, let's uh, change the color on these to, uh, I don't like gradients, so color fill, make it green, nice shade of green, come on, uh, blue. There we go. And what I'm going to do is make it just mostly translucent. And uh, I think we should have another one. So let's just duplicate that and change the interior color to, uh, to uh, yellow. And we'll make that also very translucent. And the reason I want to do this is just to sort of separate the areas where you're doing something so that it makes sense what you're doing. So, uh, like, this is all uh, kind of input-oriented, and this is all sort of 3D world-oriented. And then just neaten that up there. And then just do one last thing, which is um, take both of these and uh, send them to the back. To go up to Arrange and say Send a Back. And uh, while you're doing it, you can even uh, click on the object and, uh, excuse me, uh, Arrange again and include in the background. And then if you lock the background, um, they won't move around anymore when you're trying to play with other stuff. So, you, so if you um, just sort of select something and move it, the background doesn't move. Oop, I, I locked it. That's not what it, there you go. So if you drag on it, it won't accidentally don't go all flying all over the place. Anyway, so that is looking pretty fantastic. And we could even uh, take Bart and make him uh, quite a bit bigger here. And uh, this is starting to look like a professional unit here. And I can only imagine what you will be doing when you design your own video 3D discombobulator. So we can use our presets here. And uh, I wonder where that thing, what happened to our, uh, to our donut flying around there. Um, maybe we positioned it uh, too far away. Hmm. And got the erase color, got the torus, matrix outputs on. Where is that thing? Uh, put it on auto rotate. Oop! Oh, oh, there it is. Over there. Maybe our, uh, it's spinning around, but maybe our, um, position is all wacky. So let's uh, let's position that down to a fairly low negative number, like, uh, there we go, 0 0.25, negative 0 0.25. So we're nice and close in on the, um, on the donut now. Oh man, that, um, that uh, countdown as a donut texture is really uh, stark. Um, so let's see here. Get our erase color. Make sure that's nice and low. I've got 0 0.008. That's less than one percent. But you know, um, even when the erase color is, uh, I mean, we have a really nice uh, changer here, and it, it works great. But I think I would like to have access to the erase color. I think that's something you want, and. What the heck? We've got an extra space here for another Atrui object. So let's um, let's move this off to the side. Sorry, Bart, and um, uh, go back to uh, editing mode. Get out of presentation mode here. Um, just uh, let's see here. Okay, there we go. And uh, go get that uh, erase color Atrui. And sorry, Bart, get out of the way. 
and make it included in presentation. Fantastic. And now if we go back to presentation mode, there's our, our erase color. And we can put that, uh, that doesn't, uh, yeah, I like it closer, but this isn't quite making sense here. So just hold, bear with me, bear with me. Um, I think what I'll do is uh, move the, uh, these two over to the other side. Um, about there. Okay. And then put that in. And there we go. Erase color. And it looks great. It looks super great. So now you can pick your erase color if you so choose. And we've got our uh, 3D visual playing like crazy here. And uh, the auto position, we'll just turn it on and watch our donut disappear into the super yummy distance. Um, man, this is just uh, crazy. Uh, how would it look with the... Uh, the peppers. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. Hold on. You got to go down and uh, select um, image. There we go. Oh, yum. Yum. There's the pepper donut that we like so much. And there's the countdown peppers. It's kind of hard to see what's going on there. Um, and let's see if we can get some, get some top spin on that donut. Oh, yeah and turn up the distortion or the modulation really Woo! holy heck the fun you can have in in just one time we can turn our auto modulate on and this is the speed for the auto modulation, so that's nice and slow. And uh, man, it's just looking so fabulous. Um, whew. Well, good. I just I can't believe that there's anything else to do. I would say the one thing though is, um, you know. Lots of presets would be really good, and since we've installed all these sliders, we know they'll work better. Um, like presets for all these different things to get the very best effects out of it would be a really great way to go. Now, of course, we have these uh, for the movie, for the loops and stuff. Um, you might want to keep them separate, though, just for the sort of 3D effects and stuff like that. Um, which may mean that you have to connect the presets to all the objects you want to control. Well, I'm leaving that up to you. In the meantime, just have a ball, um, you know, coming up with new effects and modulations for your project. And I will see you in the next video.